If you speak Spanish and think you will be effortlessly able to switch to Portuguese, I've got news for you. It ain't that easy. Yes, the two languages have a lot in common, but there are some major differences that trip up my Spanish speaking students all the time. So in this video, I'm going to show you 10 quick tricks that are going to help you switch from Spanish to Portuguese and avoid that dreaded portuñol. Y si, aprendí español primero, entonces ya sé cómo es. If you need this video and are excited to learn this lesson, give me a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notified every time I publish a new video on Tuesdays. So let's get into it. Right off the bat, here are three words that you just need to cut out of your vocabulary right now, okay? These are pero, pues, and perdón, okay? If you can just switch out these guys, then you'll already sound more Portuguese, okay? So you need to replace them with Mash, pois, and desculpa. These seem to be the words that my Spanish speaking students just can't seem to avoid because they, they're the ones that just trip off the tongue, right? You use them all the time, they're filler words. So if you can manage to switch these, you're already going to be doing a really good job. Number two is all about how we use the present continuous tense. This is when we're talking about what we're doing right now. So for example, the Spanish would say, estoy hablando, okay? I am speaking. Now, the Brazilians do use this same structure. They would say, estou falando. But in Portugal, that's not how we formulate the present continuous. Instead, we say this, estou a falar. Okay? So you need to conjugate estar to be about whoever you're talking about. Add a, and then you need to add the infinitive of the action that you're doing. So for example, estou a a falar. That brings me to number three. In Spanish, certain verb endings when I'm talking about myself will end in OY. For example, voy, estoy, soy. But in Portuguese, these will end with an OU. So these will be vou, estou, sou. So if you can remember to switch that ending, you're going to be already on your way. The next one is something you need to be careful about in writing, okay? The word for and in Spanish and Portuguese sounds exactly the same, e. But in Spanish, we write that as a y, e. But in Portuguese, we write that as the letter e, e. It helps to remember that the letter Y is not native to Portuguese, so whenever you see it, it's going to be in a foreign word, okay? So for example, yoga. So try and remember when you're writing, when you're writing the word and, E, that you remember that we need to use the letter E. The next one is a pronunciation point. Look at these two words that are written exactly the same but are pronounced very different in Spanish and Portuguese, okay? We have gente and gente, okay? So in Portuguese, when I see a G that goes in front of an E or an I, it's a J sound. In Spanish, it's a H, and that's not how we do it in Portuguese. The other thing to note is the E that comes at the end in European Portuguese, it's a closed E, okay? So I'm not saying gente, I'm saying gente, gente, okay? So swallowing the end of vowels is a really uh, kind of quick and easy hack to make sure that you're sounding more Portuguese and not Spanish or Brazilian. Do you struggle with pronunciation in European Portuguese? Let me know in the comments if this is something that you have a hard time with, which are the words that you're struggling to pronounce, particularly if you're a Spanish speaker. You'll also find in the description a free download to my seven tips to instantly improve your European Portuguese pronunciation, so don't forget to check that out. Okay, number six relates to the future tense. It's very similar in Spanish and Portuguese. In Spanish, I would say, voy a hablar. For example, if we're using the same verb to speak or to talk, voy a hablar. Okay, so you might think you just need to change the verb to vo and do the same thing, vo a falar. But in Portuguese, we don't need this extra A, okay? You can just cut that out. It's simply vou falar, vou trabalhar, vou fazer, okay? So that telltale A will be you speaking portuñol, so make sure to cut that out. Another thing to look out for when you're switching from Spanish to Portuguese, yes, a lot of the words are 
either identical or very, very similar. But what I find my Spanish speaking students doing is putting in an extra I in a lot of words in Portuguese where it's not needed. So take a look at these words in Spanish. Fiesta, quiero, siempre. In Portuguese, we don't need the I in those words. These words become festa, quero, sempre. Okay, so look out for that. Find those words where you need to remember that you can drop the I and you will have the Portuguese word. And make sure you pronounce it in beautiful European Portuguese pronunciation as well. Number eight relates to the imperfect tense. This is very easy to switch from in Spanish and Portuguese. So if I take again my favorite verb, hablar, <laughs> and I put it in the imperfect, that would be hablaba. But if I do that in Portuguese, I take the word, to, the verb to speak falar, it's not falaba, it's falava, okay? So if you can just switch that B to a V, then you're already able to form the regulars for all of the imperfect tense, if it's an AR verb. If it's an ER verb, it's really even more simple. I still need just an IA at the end. So for example, in Spanish, I used to drink would be bebia, and in Portuguese, it's also bebia, but I don't need the accent on the I, okay? So make sure you just don't put that accent on the I and you're already speaking Portuguese. You'll also notice that lots of words that are a double L in Spanish become a CH in Portuguese. So look at these two words, llover, llave. In Portuguese, these become chover, chave, okay? So remember, well, we don't have a double L in Portuguese, so it's likely that you're gonna need to switch to a CH when you see that. Last but not least, a very important hack when it comes to the letter J in Spanish, a H sound. In Portuguese, these words are gonna take an IX instead. Watch how it works. So, for example, I have the words bajo, dejo. In Portuguese, they'll sound like this, baixo. So you need to have this nice sound of the AI and the EI together sounding like I, A, so that you come up with this really nice pronunciation of baixo, deixo, okay? It's a longer sound than you would have in the Spanish. And also we don't have the H, we have the SH sound with an X. I hope that was helpful for you Spanish speakers out there. I hope I've done my bit to avoid that portuñol uh, and that you'll be feeling more confident when you are using your Portuguese uh, so that your Spanish isn't creeping out there. I'll be back next week with more tips and tricks to improve your European Portuguese. Don't forget to check out my other videos on slang and understanding fast Portuguese uh, that are gonna help you take your Portuguese to the next level. If you've got ideas of what I should include in the future, then please mention that in the comments and I will always respond to you and put them on my list. It's getting pretty long. It was great to see you all again. Thanks for sharing this time with me. Ciao for now.